welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new here. You are in store for another WW Weekly Meal Prep. I added a little Christmas flair to this week's meal prep. I have a breakfast, a lunch, and a snack. So I can't wait to share what I have in store for you to help me stay on track give you some great WW recipe ideas. So if you wanna see what I have in store for this week's WW meal prep, just stay tuned. For breakfast this week, I'm going to be making a gingerbread apple pancake bake. I am bringing all the flavors of the holiday season to breakfast this week. I've been craving something gingerbread and this sounds delicious. So let me show you what is in this week's breakfast. You're going to need some sweetener of your choice. I'm going to be doing monk fruit sweetener, all purpose flour, milk of your choice. I have a fair life fat free milk, molasses, salt, eggs, ginger and ground cinnamon and one to two medium sized apples. So let's get started on this week's breakfast. So the first thing that we're going to do is peel and dice our two apples. Also make sure that you put your eggs and your milk on the counter and let them sit and get to room temperature. The recipe works a lot better if those two cold ingredients are at room temp. So just kind of an FYI. So let's get these peeled and chopped. After you've chopped your apples, you're going to go ahead and add them to a bowl. To that, you're going to add two tablespoons of your sugar of your choice. And again, I used the monk fruit. And then we're also going to add some ground cinnamon. And of course, you can do that to your liking. I love cinnamon. The recipe wants about a half of a teaspoon. So I'm actually going to do more like a teaspoon of cinnamon. Plus, I did chop up two apples instead of one. So go ahead and get that cinnamon sugar mixture nice and combined over those apples and then we're actually going to get this put into our baking dish and then we'll start making the pancake part of our recipe you're going to take a greased pie dish or dish of your choice and then we're going to go ahead and add the apples to the bottom of our pie dish and we want to get those spread out as even as we can this is going to form the bottom layer of our pancake bake this is already looking so good I'm so excited for gingerbread. So we're just gonna lay those out in the bottom of our pan. And then we're gonna preheat our oven to 400 degrees and put our apples in for about five minutes just to kind of start the cooking process of our apples. But this by itself looks so good. While our apples are in the oven, we're gonna put together our pancake base. So you're going to need a blender. I'm just using my magic bullet. It's just easier for cleanup. To that, we are gonna go ahead and add in three eggs so these have been sitting out and are now room temperature which is exactly what you want for this recipe it just helps the pancake puff up a bit more we're also going to add in one cup of our milk which is the fair life non-fat milk and then we're going to add in the other two tablespoons of our monk fruit sweetener and then we have three quarters of a cup of our all-purpose flour I'm gonna go ahead and give that a quick blend just because my magic bullet's pretty full. And then once it blends down just a little bit, we'll add in the last couple of ingredients, the molasses, the ginger, and the salt. So go ahead and give that a quick preliminary blend. All right, and then we're gonna add in our two tablespoons of the molasses, which is gonna make it all things gingerbread with molasses in there. Molasses is so delicious. Okay, so we have two tablespoons of that. And then lastly, we're going to add just a pinch of salt. So I would say maybe half of a teaspoon of salt. And then it wants half of a teaspoon of the ginger. And then we're going to give this another blend. After you pull your apples out of the oven, you're going to go ahead and take that mix, that pancake mix, and we're just going to pour it right over the top. It smells so delicious so we're gonna do that we're gonna put this back into the oven at the 400 degrees for about 25 minutes until our pancake bake is puffed and golden brown 
So the gingerbread apple pancake bake just got out of the oven. Look at how good this looks. My house smells so good. So I'm going to let this cool for just a little bit. We're going to pop it out of the container or the pan, and then we're going to dust a little powdered sugar on top, slice it up, and I'll show you the serving size. I'll show you what I'm going to pair it with for breakfast, and of course, give you the smart points. It was the night before Christmas. I was closing down for business in my little prison shop. When the bell on the door jingled once more, and then time almost came to a stop. But somehow I knew, and maybe so did you. So here's breakfast for the week. I'm going to be pairing this with most likely an over easy egg or a scrambled egg and maybe an egg white for a little bit of protein. But this is what I'm going to be having this week for breakfast. So I have one serving of the gingerbread pancake bake. This is so good. It is dense like cake. It is so delicious. It kind of is a cross between like a pumpkin pie texture and cake. It is outstanding. And one sixth of the recipe is only four smart points. So this pancake bake is four points. I'm going to pair that with some blueberries and then an egg and an egg for me on the green plan is two smart points. So my breakfast will be six points total with the egg, but just for the gingerbread apple pancake bake is only four smart points. For lunches this week, I'm going to be making a winter cob salad. This is a little bit higher in points, but it has everything for your lunch. It has your protein, your healthy fat, your greens, your veggies and fruit. It has everything that you need. So let me show you first what is in the dressing and then what is in the actual salad itself. For the dressing, you're going to need olive oil or avocado oil, apple cider vinegar, light mayo, salt, ground pepper, or I'm sorry, ground mustard, and honey. I'm gonna be using sugar-free honey. That really helps save on points for the dressing because it's pretty high with the avocado oil. So this is the Nature's Hollow Sugar-Free Honey. I purchased this off of Nettrition. It is the best honey substitute. It tastes like real honey, and it is about an eighth of the smart points. So you can have one tablespoon of this for one point, where you can have one teaspoon of regular honey for one point. So saves points and taste delicious. The link for Nutrition is down in the description box below. So definitely check it out. I highly recommend adding this to your cart. And there are several other great WW products on Nutrition's website. So again, the link is down in the description box below. So that's everything that is in the dressing. And then for the salad itself, you're going to need some sugar-free maple syrup, reduced sugar craisins, pepper, butternut squash, whatever greens you want to use. I'm going to be using this Italian style, which is romaine and radicchio, and then the protein greens from Organic Girl, which are sweet pea leaves. So good. So I'm going to mix those two together. You're also going to need a couple of pears, avocado, bacon of your choice. I have the Private Selection Center Cut Bacon. I love this bacon because you can have two slices for one point. So it is so low and delicious. And then of course you're going to need some pecans. So let's get started on our winter cob salad. So the first thing I'm going to do is put my bacon into the oven. 400 degrees. I just line a sheet pan with some foil and the bacon comes out perfectly cooked and it's a very easy cleanup. So let's get this bacon cooked and then we'll start making the dressing for our salad. While our bacon's in the oven, we're going to go ahead and chop up our butternut squash. I really wanted to get the already pre-chopped ones, but they didn't have any at the store. So we just want to cut this into cubes and we are going to roast this in the oven uh, before we add it to our salad. And then once we finish our squash, we're also going to chop our pecans and toast those on the stove as well. So let's get this butternut squash chopped up. Door. Once more, and then time almost came to a stop. But somehow I knew, and maybe so did you, that everything would change. 
we're ready to put our butternut squash in the oven. So I've spread it out here on my baking sheet lined with parchment. I'm gonna give it a quick spray with just some nonstick cooking spray. And that'll just kind of help brown it up a little bit. And then we're also going to put about a tablespoon of maple syrup over the top of our butternut squash. So I'm just gonna kind of give it just a quick drizzle. And then we're gonna throw this in the oven and get this baked up. While our butternut squash is in the oven, I'm gonna go ahead and just toast up one third cup of my chopped pecans. And we'll get these nice and toasted. It really brings out the flavor. And then we're just gonna set these aside. While our squash is in the oven, we're gonna make the dressing for our salad. So I have one half of a cup of apple cider vinegar and make sure you get the one with the mother. I'll show you here on mine. See how it says with the mother, this is the best apple cider vinegar. So I have one cup of that. I have one quarter cup of avocado oil. You can also use olive oil, whatever you, you have on hand. And then we're going to add one quarter of a cup of light mayo. And then we are going to add in three tablespoons of our sugar-free honey. We're gonna add some ground mustard and the recipe wants about a half of a teaspoon. So I'm just gonna kind of put in a little bit of the mustard. And then the last couple of things that we have to add are salt and pepper. So again, just to your liking, go ahead and add in some salt and pepper. And then we're gonna take our whisk here and we're just gonna whisk this until it is emulsified. It comes together, it's nice and creamy. I'm gonna cover it with some saran wrap and we're just gonna throw this into the fridge until we're ready to eat our salad or put together my meal prep. I'm gonna put this in little containers and into the bowl for my salads for the week. So just get it nice and combined until you don't have any more chunks of the mayo. So the assembly of the salads is gonna be a little bit different for this week. I am going to be using my meal prep bowls. All of my meal prep containers are linked down in my Amazon store in the description box. So I went ahead and mixed together the two lettuce mixes so that it's nice and combined. So what we're going to do to assemble our salad is we're gonna go ahead and fill our bowl here with some greens. Now our other ingredients here makes eight servings total. So I'm gonna bowl up five salads and then I'm gonna have salad today, my husband and myself. So I'm gonna show you what the completed salad looks like put together when I go to eat it. So you're gonna see me assemble them for meal prep and then you're going to see what the actual salad looks like when we do go to have it for lunch today. So go ahead and add your greens to your bowl. The only other things that we're gonna add to our bowl are the butternut squash pieces. And that's just because it's okay if those are added prematurely before we actually eat our salad. So go ahead and add a few pieces of butternut squash. Now the pears, the bacon, the craisins, and the toasted pecans are all gonna be bagged up separately and added to our salad. So I have my little snack size Ziploc bags and I'm going to take just a little bit of the pecans here. Remember this again is eight servings so you want to be aware of how much you're putting in your bag here and then also I'm going to add a few of the reduced sugar craisins to my bag and then I'm going to seal that up and that is going to be just the pecans and the craisins and then I just go ahead and add that directly onto my bowl of lettuce and squash. My other Ziploc bag is going to have my two slices of the center cut bacon, and I'm just gonna put that directly into a baggie, and I will crumble that and add it to my salad when I go to eat it. So that's also going to get added to the bowl. And lastly, in the third bag, I'm going to just add a couple of slices of my pear and then that's going to go into my bowl. So I've got my bacon, my pear, my craisins and nuts. And then the last thing that's going to go in my bowl here is one eighth of the dressing. So for the dressing, I do have my little reusable cups. I got these at Home Goods. I also have an eighth of a cup measuring cup here. I'm gonna put in about one and a half of those into my salad dressing container. And I think that's going to be the perfect amount to make eight salads. And then I'm just going to slip that into my bowl. So my salad is ready to go. So when I go to eat it, I just put my pears, bacon, nuts and craisins and drizzle over my dressing and I'm good to go. So I'm gonna put together the rest of my salads. But somehow I knew and maybe so did you that everything would change from now on. Yes, from this Christmas song. This Christmas song.
of my snacks this week, I'm gonna be making a homemade cranberry nut granola. I'll be putting this on yogurt and things throughout the week. I've been craving granola and this sounds so good. So let me show you what is in this recipe. First, you're going to need some pumpkin seeds or pepitas, sunflower seeds, dry roasted almonds, also some sugar-free syrup, unsweetened cranberry juice concentrate, so nothing that has any added sugar, rolled oats, nonstick cooking spray, cinnamon, salt, brown sugar alternative of your choice. I'm gonna be using sucre and gold. This is my very, very favorite brown sugar alternative. It tastes like the real thing, zero calories, zero points. I purchased this off of Nettrition's website, the same site that we bought the honey for my lunch recipe. So again, another great thing to add to your cart at Nettrition's website. It is linked down in the description box below. And then lastly, some reduced sugar craisins. So let's get started on our granola. So the first thing you're gonna do is line your baking sheet with some parchment paper. We're going to add one third cup of our pumpkin seeds. And then we're also going to add one quarter cup of sunflower seeds and we're just gonna spread these out and we're gonna throw these in the oven at 350 for about 10 minutes until they're nice and toasted. In a small saucepan, you're gonna go ahead and add in your one third cup of sugar-free maple syrup. We're also going to add in half of a cup of our cranberry juice concentrate. And we're gonna add in the two thirds cup of brown sugar. You can see I have two different kinds. I ran out of sucrin, so I'm using the monk fruit golden as well. And then lastly, we're just gonna add in a little bit of ground cinnamon. And you're going to stir this constantly until it is dissolved. The sugar is nice and dissolved, and it's going to make kind of a thick syrup, cranberry syrup, for our granola. We're gonna go ahead and grab out a medium-sized bowl, add our two cups of oats to our bowl. We're also going to add our one half of a cup of roasted almonds and a little bit of salt. We're gonna give this a quick mix. Let's grab our pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds out of the oven and then we'll add those as well. So I went ahead and added those roasted sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds to the mix. I reduced the heat on my oven to 325. And then the last step is we're gonna take our maple syrup, cranberry mixture, and we're gonna go ahead and add it directly here to our oats. Oh, looks so good. We're gonna get this mixed together. You just wanna make sure that everything is nice and coated in that syrup mixture. That's what's gonna give it that chewy, delicious granola texture. And then we'll be ready to get this onto a sheet pan and get it into the oven. Grab out your sheet pan and your nonstick cooking spray. Give it a nice coating. We definitely don't want our granola to stick to our sheet pan. And then we're going to go ahead and add this yumminess directly to our pan. Spread it out somewhat thin because you do want it to cook all the way through. We want it to get nice and chewy and crispy like granola. And then we're going to go ahead and put this in our oven at 325 for about 20 minutes just until it's cooked through. Then we'll pull it out. We'll add our cranberries, throw it back in for a few more minutes, and we will have WW Friendly homemade granola. So I just pulled the granola out of the oven. We're going to go ahead and add in one cup of our reduced sugar craisins. So we're going to add that into the mix of the granola, kind of spread that out. And then we're going to put this back in the oven for about 10 more minutes until everything is nice and crispy. Granola is out of the oven. Yum. Look at this, you guys. So delicious. I'm going to let this cool for a little bit. This granola makes 12 servings. I'm going to show you how I'm going to weigh it out so I know exactly what I'm eating per serving. So I'm going to let this cool for a little bit and then we'll get this all weighed and measured so we know exactly how much per serving is and I'll give you the smart points. All right, so you saw me weigh out my granola. So I added both of the grams together and look at this, 53.25 grams in a serving. So 53 grams of this homemade granola and you guys, this is delicious, I tried it. It has a little bit of tang of the cranberry, but sweet, it's so good. So 53.25 grams 
is five smart points. So this granola makes 12 servings at five smart points per serving. Now you can have a little bit over 10 grams for one smart point. So that's probably what I will do is measure out 10 grams on top of my yogurt and it will be a one smart point snack. Um, well then my yogurt of course, one smart point worth of granola plus the points of the yogurt. So highly recommend this granola. It is delicious and you get a ton for five smart points. In fact, let me measure out 53 grams and I'll show you the amount that you receive for five points. So here's 53 grams of granola. That is a lot. So again, if you weigh out 10 grams, it's one smart point, 20 grams is two smart points. It's basically one point per 10 grams of granola, but not, that's a lot for five smart points. So here's my snacks for the week. I'm keeping it pretty simple this week. So of course for my morning snack, I'm gonna be having my Built Bar. I have this every morning. It is the one thing that keeps me satisfied, keeps me full. It is only three smart points. This particular one is coconut almond. And if you are an Almond Joy lover, you are going to love this Built Bar. It literally tastes like an Almond Joy. It has chunks of coconut, chunks of almonds and it is only three smart points. Look at these macros, 130 calories, 18 grams of protein. So that with the seven grams of fiber, five fat, keep you nice and full, and there's only three grams of sugar. So this is one of my very, very favorite flavors of Built Bar. This one, again, is three points. All of the Built Bars are three smart points with the exception of the peanut butter. That one is actually four because it is made with organic peanut butter, has chunks of peanuts in it, so, delicious, but highly recommend Built Bar. It's a great on the go snack. You can even use it as a meal replacement. Delicious. My code here on the screen will get you 10% off and free shipping. So head over to Built Bar, definitely order the bars. They are so good. They're a staple on really any eating plan. They're even keto friendly, WW friendly on all three plans. I love them. I literally eat one every day, at least one every single day. So head over, pick yourself up some Built Bars. I'm also going to be having a yogurt. I've been loving the Siggies, as you guys know. This is the 0% milk fat strained non-fat yogurt. What I love about this is the taste and the ingredients. Pasteurized skim milk, raspberries, cane sugar, fruit pectin, live active cultures. That's it, you guys. Three smart points. And what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of the granola that I made in meal prep to the top. Probably one smart point worse. So then this will be a four smart point snack. It'll give me a dose of protein and sweetness from the granola. Siggy's yogurt, in my opinion, honestly, is the best yogurt out there. It is so incredibly delicious and the ingredients are stellar. So that's gonna be a snack. And then also just because I'll be out and about with Christmas coming and doing some last minute shopping and planning for the holidays, I'm gonna be having an Cafe Latte Iconic Protein Shake. These are so good. They are grass fed. There's 20 grams of protein, only three sugar, 130 calories, and two smart points. Now, what is great about this, besides the fact that it does have some caffeine in it, is the ingredients in the Iconic are so much cleaner and better than Premier, and it is also only two smart points, just like the Premier protein, but look at these ingredients, just so much better. Sweetened with monk fruit ingredients you can pronounce, grass-fed milk, absolutely delicious. So here's a little bit more about the Iconic Shakes. I do have a code for Iconic. I will put it here on the screen. Definitely check them out. They have quite a few flavors. If you're not interested in one with caffeine, the chocolate and the vanilla are so good. They have a matcha. I mean, they have some really fun protein shake flavors. And again, you can throw these in the car. They do not have to be refrigerated. You can add them to shots of coffee or drink them by yourself. So good. So I'm just gonna have one of those on hand as an extra snack. And for two smart points, you can't beat it. So Iconic Protein Shakes, Siggy's Yogurt with Granola, and Built Bar. So those are my snacks for the week. Thank you so much for joining me on this week's WW Meal Prep. I hope you enjoyed seeing this breakfast, this lunch, this snack. They are all absolutely delicious. And once again, I can't wait to eat my meal prepped food throughout this week. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Make sure you subscribe, hit the little bell so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. To let you know, all of the recipes are down in the description box below with any modifications that I made to make them a little bit more WW friendly. I do follow the green plan, so those are the points that I have listed with all of the recipes. Now, if you're interested in the points for both the blue and the purple plan, just head over and join my Facebook group 
It's right there on the screen. Join us, we have almost 12,000 members and my admins are so gracious as to post the blue and purple points for every recipe that I share here on my channel in the file section of my Facebook group. Come on over, we'd love to have you no matter what plan or live lifestyle or diet you're following, we'd love to have you be part of our community. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'd love it if you'd give this meal prep a thumbs up. And of course, leave those comments down below and let me know what of these recipes are you absolutely trying this week. And I'll see you guys all in my next video. Happy holidays.